Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. I'm going to be talking about a role-playing game, but not Dungeons & Dragons. In fact, you already know from the title. Why am I doing this? Because I just had inspiration recently, or a dream, or something, about, like, mixing it up, coming up with new content for my channel. Um, I don't want it to stagnate. So I just thought, yeah, let's do something new. Uh, let's talk about I mean, we're not going to go too far off the beaten path. I've talked a lot of Dungeons and & Dragons, and I love Dungeons & Dragons, and it's still going to be mentioned. i got plenty more D&D related videos to go. Uh, but I just thought, yeah, no, let's, let's do something a little different, a little fringe. Um, let's talk about Star Frontiers. This is the role-playing game that I actually took over for our gaming group. We played a lot of D&D. And we actually, we did dabble in other areas. We tried out um, the TSR at the time, who were making Dungeons & Dragons, actually had a variety of different types of games. They had Gamma World, which is this pseudo Mad Max, but with mutants and high-tech weaponry uh, post-apocalyptic game. We tried that out. Uh, there was Boot Hill, a cowboy game. There was Top Secret, a James Bond type game. And I remember thinking at the time, boy, it'd be nice if there was a science fiction game. And lo and behold, out came Star Frontiers. Um, what, it was one of the other D&D &D, uh, DMs that actually initially started a campaign of this. And I was thrilled. I just thought, yeah, let's go with laser guns and aliens and spaceships and other worlds. I love it. And I wasn't, nothing against the guy who was DMing it. I wasn't thrilled with where the direction was that they wanted to go and I thought hmm, all right then I think I complained enough times that one of the DMs was like hey it's smart ass you damn well do a, a campaign so I did I was like all right yeah sure god let's been thrown down I'm gonna pick it up and actually do a Star Frontiers campaign um and I'm gonna talk in in bits and pieces I've got a few ideas for some videos related to good old Star Frontiers so uh, I'm not going to go into too much depth in this one. Just going to kind of go over the the gist of it, the the, the introductory stuff. It was um, developed in 1982, and I think TSR at the time were thinking, well, we want to branch out. We've got this very successful Dungeons and Dragons thing going on. Let's try Gamma World. Let's try Boot Hell. Let's do these other things. And Star Frontiers just seemed like a natural fit. Uh, what they came out with in this set is a little, even the advanced version, like the basic rules are very basic. You essentially just move around, I can't really make it out, I'll show a few pictures here. You basically, it was very much tiles moving around on squares on a map with, you know, spaceship bulkheads or alien planets in the way, or plants in the way, and you got to move around and line up your shot. And, um, it, it was very much uh, like Dungeons & Dragons m sort of early prototype, um, almost uh, war games level, where you've got little tin soldiers. Like, that was very much what Star Frontiers kind of began with. And I didn't, I didn't like that so much. Also, uh, the, the main premise of the, of the game, what they were aiming for for people who were starting into this, was almost a Wild West in space. And you know what? It actually, in its inception, I think they were going for what would eventually become Firefly, where you've got this very sort of cowboys in space and your lawmen and you're chasing rustlers and, or, you know, you're actually fighting the evil aliens, which we'll, we'll get into the different aliens in a second. Um, and I just, I don't know, it didn't really sit with me. I mean, a friend of mine, the, the DM who said, here, you do it. He actually said, you know, it's called Star Frontiers, right? It's like the Wild West. It's a new frontier. It's cowboys in space. So, yeah, enjoy. Um, and I didn't I didn't like that premise. I was thinking, oh, okay, well, what's your version of Star Frontiers going to be then? And I kind of took, I cherry-picked my favorite bits of all the different science fiction that I like, threw it together, but I didn't understand kind of the, the flavor of science fiction I wanted to go with until years later. But let's roll it back. Let's, let's talk about early Star Frontiers. You start off, you've got four races to choose from. There are the humans, which we all know. The Dralocytes, which are these amoeba-like rubbery creatures. Um, there's, oh, there's some animation um, where you had these rubbery 
ball-like creatures. I'll see if I can find them and put a clip here. Uh, it's sort of that as an alien race. I mean, not they're not um, able to turn themselves into like a pack of cigarettes or a missile or anything. They're not the T-1000. Neither was he. But uh, they were sort of able to uh, grow themselves another arm if they need it or, you know, very rubbery creatures. And I love that design. I think the Dralocytes are probably my favorite creatures in the in the extended universe of Star Frontiers. Um, you also had the Vrusk, who were this basically giant uh, praying mantis uh, beings, but they were very, um, I don't know how I would describe their personality. They were almost like if you crossed from Star Trek, if you took the Vulcans with their, not logic, but like their sort of cold, analytical, scientific mindset, and crossed them with the Ferengi, who were very business oriented and kind of, you know, looking for the best deal. That was the Vrusks. They were a business corporate. Uh, the, the, the company is the most important thing. My particular uh, part in the whole scheme doesn't matter that much. Um, that was sort of what the Vrusks were, in a sense. They were quite interesting. They certainly made for some interesting situations. How does that drive a car? That's for a future video. And then finally, we had the Azarians. Now, they were kind of the Klingons of the game-ish. They, they were surprisingly weak. They actually had a subtraction to their strengths. So you think, well, what kind of a warrior race has a, a weaker uh, sort of body type? That was a strange uh, sort of uh, element to the game. But they were, I always envisioned them more like kind of Zulu warriors, uh, very lithe and quick. Um, they had this very cool ability with their uh, flaps of wing, uh, not wings, but they were able to do like, um, like flying squirrels. They could capture air and descend down in almost like a jumpsuit. Um, very, very neat idea, something different. I would almost say they were similar to the Kilrathi in um, the Wing Commander series, that, you know, wild warrior type of race. It was kind of cool. Who were the bad guys? Ah, those were the Sathar. A very interesting uh, bad guy alien, certainly for the time, because you didn't really have... They were supposed to be used very sparingly and kind of mysterious and organic, and you don't talk to them... They have a different type of technology. I liked the appeal and the mystery of the Sathar. And what was always interesting, uh, sort of their staple, their calling card, if you will, if you were to ever capture them or if they were to crash land somewhere or something like that, they would all commit suicide. That was a known thing among the Sathar. We would rather die than be captured or have anything go. So they were a very wrapped in mystery, uh, bizarre kind of a race. Now that makes for a nice launching point but if you come from say kind of the star wars angle where you have lots of different types of aliens with all variety and, and imagination you're thinking well four aliens that you can play that's really basic but i like that because it fleshed them out it gave each race depth and interest and you could have two dralocytes of varying different very different personalities it actually happened in a couple of campaigns i will save that for another video um, so I liked the bare bones element, I guess, because this was just they're launching the, the screen. There's a Gazarian right there. Uh, they're, they're launching the game, so they're kind of keeping it reined in as far as what was possible. Um, that was interesting and a unique thing. And also, it's not galaxy spanning. I was thinking to myself, oh, this is a game that's like Star Trek and Star Wars. You know, it takes across hundreds and thousands of light years. No, no, it was actually a very finite area that was in the game map. A um, couple hundred light years across, and that's it. So that was like, okay, this is kind of different. All right, we're, we're, I'm intrigued. Let's hear more. So that was sort of my beginning of it. Now, I got handed the rules, and I'm seeing this very basic bones kind of move your pieces around and, and shoot your guns. I liked the technology. It was... Star Wars-ish, without being Star Trek. Uh, didn't have lightsabers, but you had a kind of a medieval sword or, you know, sonic swords you had. You had um, different kinds of uh, melee weapons if you wanted to use them, but mostly it was pistols and ray guns and 
almost, I, I guess, a Buck Rogers level of uh, technology, which was kind of nice. It made the furnace, you had grenades that you could buy, and yet you would still use a rope to get through an adventure, that kind of stuff. So that was cool. I liked, I liked where it was uh, planted as far as a technology. Uh, friends of mine have asked me lately, you know, are you ever thinking of taking up Star Frontiers again? And sadly, I don't think I can because our modern world has actually surpassed what Star Frontiers had thought was so futuristic back in 1982. So, I don't know, like, do I create a world of this spacefaring civilization now? And people are like, well, what do you mean there's nothing like Facebook or Twitter? Like, that seems crazy. I know, I'll invent it. And then they become millionaires. Like, eh, eh whatever. I, I'm, I, for me, I quite enjoy Star Frontiers where it was in the 80s and my memories of it. I really, really liked. Now, before I wrap this up, because again, I'm going to go into much further detail. This is just sort of a bird's eye view. Um, after the original rules came out, they actually released Nighthawks which is how to do spaceship combat. And the really cool thing, and I will go into this in further detail, um, the idea they had for how the spaceship uh, floor plans were laid out was very rooted in reality. And I was really surprised at that. I thought to myself, yeah, they're just, they're throwing out a quick Buck Rogers game. You know, you move around, you shoot your spaceship, you fire your torpedoes, etc., whatever. No, this has got a heck of a lot of depth that I didn't see again until kind of um, Babylon 5 in the 90s. Like, this thing was very... Uh, how do I want to put it? They had pretty good precognition of where the, the, the root of science that was in Star Frontiers was very impressive. And it actually made for leaps into the storyline that were quite believable. It was really well done. I'm going to talk about that at length. Um, now, in 1985, I think it was, there was luckily an expansion to Star Frontiers. Zebulon's Guide to Frontier Space. Was it 85? I think so. Does it say on the front? No. Well, anyway. This, this book really did add a whole bunch of new levels of detail. Where's the year? 85. <laughs> yes. Uh, this added a nice um, variety to the combat, and it, it elevated the game for such a simple book. Like, it's only, what, 100-odd pages. Um, it took what were really bare bones in the original rule set, and it brought things to life. And... I, by the time this book came out, I was kind of like, okay, one of our uh, dungeon masters was great at creating his own house rules that fleshed out the game a lot and made his version of Dungeons and Dragons very unique. And he was very much saying, hey, look, if the rules don't have it in there for you, make up your own. If you want more alien races, make up your own. It's your world. It's your imagination that's limiting things. Don't wait for them to come out, you know, from TSR. Make your own stuff. So I took what was in some of this, and I modified it and made a rule set that I quite liked. I, I remember watching a lot of shows, uh, the classic being, you know, Dirty Harry, where he's got the, the pistol and the guy on the ground, and you feel lucky, punk, that whole thing. And I thought, he, according to the rule set, he can only do like 10 points of damage. That guy's going to live no matter what. But he's got a pistol pointed directly at his face. And I came up with modifications to the rules, where in a scenario like that, you're going to take a lot more. And I'll never forget one of the players was uh, at, um, there was a, a crashed spaceship and somebody else was there and he was wielding just a big pipe, kind of like in Final Fight. He's just swinging a big metal pipe. And my buddy was like, well, okay, fine, let's take you on. And he took a big chunk of damage by these new rules of mine. And he was like, whoa, okay, this is a lot tougher than I thought. I was like, yeah, he's swinging a metal pipe at your head, of course. So he ended up actually really, really liking my campaign and... That made it more enjoyable, more rewarding. Um, I took further steps to flesh it all out. Now, admittedly, the timing sucked because this was around the time I moved to the UK. So I had lots of spare time to flesh out the rules, but no players to actually play it, which was a bit sad. I'll, I'll maybe talk about that in a future video because what I ended up doing was modifying the type of science fiction that Star Frontiers was at that stage and coming up with a new flavor of what was originally going on in the 80s, I took it into a new realm that I was 
enjoying because it was kind of based on some of my life experiences. And so I, my game was quite unique. And when we came back and I had that new rule set and that guy played it and he was like, whoa, I'm taking this much damage from a pipe. It really made it fun and something that we could all really get on board. And I do miss it. I, I kind of, there's a part of me that wishes I was back to it. Heck, I even have the the miniatures, the figurines for it, which I painted and we're all ready to go. I think we played in the 90s from, oh, when was that? Mid-90s, 95-ish, up to 2002-ish. Uh, and we had a lot of fun. But it was, you know, all good things must come to an end. Life starts to get in the way and got to get careers and all that kind of good stuff. But yeah, no, Star Frontiers for me, it's uh, it's got a special place in my heart. And I want to talk of more about Star Frontiers than the Dungeons and Dragons stuff I've done so far. Because, hey, I got to mix it up. I got to come up with some new content for my channel. Uh, so yeah, I look forward to some Star Frontiers specific, science fiction specific stuff. Uh, coming up with these role-playing stories in future. Uh, but do not worry, I have plenty of Dungeons & Dragons stuff still, still to do, so you will be seeing more of that also. All right, well, for now, I'll say until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.